Welcome to the Conscience of Kansas radio show with Paul A. Ibbotson, a no-nonsense conservative talk show that looks at the local, state, and national issues that affect the people of Kansas. And now, here's Paul A. Ibbotson. All right, let's start right at the very beginning. I just wrote this article entitled Ron Paul and the Cujo Effect. Now, Cujo was a dog from a 1980s novel written by Stephen King. In 1981, the book came out. Then later in 1983, they made the movie, a very scary movie. It was about this St. Bernard that uh, caught rabies and just went psycho. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cujo, is that you, boy? Is that your giant frothing mouth about to go around my neck? I've always thought, and I know I'm old school, but a lot of the movies made in the 80s were really good. Stephen King stuff was always really good. Good. Cujo was a scary story that really had a very low budget, not a lot going on. Just basically, the story centered around a woman and her child trapped alone in their car with this giant rabid St. Bernard trying to get them. And most people, like me, wanted Cujo to die very quickly. But Cujo wasn't bad completely. And this is what we can look at with Ron Paul. Cujo was a good, nice St. Bernard. Good doggy Cujo. That's a good doggy. Yeah, yeah. And he was out playing playing in the yard, chasing after a rabbit, and he gets bit on the nose by a bat. Well, his useless master didn't give him rabies shots, and he turned rabid and then went psycho. So in reality, Cujo was a good dog that just had a little crazy in him. And of course, that crazy was rabies, and it permeated his character in the story, and he no longer became the good dog and became the crazy dog. Now enters Ron Paul. Now, Ron Paul is the congressman from Texas who ran in 1988 as a libertarian and then ran again in 2008 on the Republican ticket. And the reason why I talk about Ron Paul is not to incite all the Ron Paulies. And believe you me, I have gotten hundreds and hundreds of angry emails, death threats, you know, all kinds of psycho, psycho stuff is still pouring in. And I think I want to do a posting of them at goprevolution.ning.com because they love my hate mail, especially my Ron Paul hate mail always makes them giggle. But Cujo is like Ron Paul in this way. Ron Paul is not totally bad, just like Cujo was not totally bad. Ron Paul has some very conservative ideas, talking about the Constitution, the free market, limited government, all things that I believe are conservative values, all things that have made this country flourish, all things that I support as a conservative. I have even praised Ron Paul on his military service, and some of the Ron Paul detractors have taken issue with me on that, but I say I don't care how you go about serving in the military, whether you're drafted, whether you volunteer, whether you sign up for the minimum or the maximum. I praise everybody that serves in the military and serves our country. I do that even for John Kerry, who I think is basically a turd. I praise him for going to Vietnam and serving. And so I do the same for Ron Paul and I stick by that. But what the problem is with Ron Paul is that despite his good characteristics, he has a little bit of crazy in him and that he goes to this radical plan for many of his ideas. He doesn't want to have big government. I don't either. So he wants to destroy the Fed and the IRS. And many people don't like the Fed. I don't like the Fed. I think the IRS mess with us is not fair. But to destroy those, he has no logical, feasible option to put into place. He doesn't want to put the fair tax like we had the fair tax Kansas City people on last week. No, he doesn't want to have that at all. He says, well, we don't need that. We didn't have any of this until 1913, as if almost 100 years makes no difference at all. Ron Paul's mentality quite often is to jump back. The kind of mentality is says, we can go the horse and buggy. You know, to, he- to heck with the cars and automobiles. We used to have the horse and buggy. It worked pretty good back then. Let's just go back and do it. These are non-realistic ideas that come from Ron Paul, and that's what puts him on the fringe with people. Let's look at a few other fringe ideas from Ron Paul. Ron Paul, and I call it a libertarian tie. You can call it whatever you want, is a blame America first guy. He's a conspiracy guy. He wants to eliminate the F. 
FBI and the CIA. He harps on the CIA. Back in 1988, he was attacking Ronald Reagan in the use of the CIA. Even though you go to his website, he'll try to say his praise for Ronald Reagan to draw in votes. He was attacking Ronald Reagan and the work that Ronald Reagan did with the CIA to fight communism back in 1988. And now he comes in 2008 and does the very same thing when we look at 9-11 and the radical Islamic terrorists that are at us. And this is a common theme with the hate mail I'm getting. People echo what Ron Paul says and that we wouldn't have problems abroad with the Islamic world if we didn't have agents out in these parts of the world doing stuff. That it's America's fault. That it has nothing to do with a diametric difference between Sharia law and free market capitalist Christian nations. That's stupid. That is stupid. There is no doubt that we can find instances of the CIA doing wrong. It's never been an issue of perfection, but we have to stay in reality when we're talking about these issues. And this is where Ron Paul really does a disservice to our national defense. If America is going to protect itself, we have to be go beyond our borders. We cannot be isolationists. We cannot think that we can build a moat, whether it is physical or figuratively, around this country and no harm will come to us. That's a fool's plan. It would have been a fool's plan whether we're fighting radical Islamic terrorists or fighting the Soviet Union or fighting the Nazis or the Japanese or anyone to think think that an aggressor won't come after you if they want to. And to be naive enough to think that if we do not have intelligence about things that we can <laughs> preempt, let alone just defend ourselves. So Ron Paul's dangerous to national security with his isolationist activities and thoughts. He is detrimental to the morale of the country by being a blame America first person. I realized this early on in the primaries where you saw the 9-11 truthers, the loose changers, the nut job conspiracy theorists following Ron Paul. When you see Ron Paul signs made together with signs that say 9-11 was an inside job, you're dealing with crazy radicals. And a lot of the hate mail I'm getting from the Ron Paulies right now I say, well, you're just not a conservative. You're not a conservative. You're a neocon. I can't even count the number of emails that call me a neocon. Ron Paulies out there understand that crazy does not have a political affiliation. Conservative and liberal have nothing to do with crazy. Crazy Crazy is crazy all by itself. And if you believe that our government blew up the Twin Towers, Bush and Cheney setting sastral charges in the building, or if you're thinking that our government doesn't want to catch bin Laden, you're a nut. You need to uh, think about a little bit of medication because it's not rational thinking from any standpoint. Of course, when it comes to Ron Paul, he's got lots of other crazy things. He wanted to legalize drugs back in the 1980s. And what did he do? He took that same blame America first mentality and applied it to the drug laws that we had. He said, you know, these drug dealers, they're not to blame. It's not their fault. It's the stupid drug laws. If we didn't have these drug laws, then we wouldn't have the drug dealers and all this problem. Man, that kind of mentality is used by liberals all the time. I used to deal with this with criminals. Rapists would say, you know, why are they picking on me? It's not that I got a raping problem. It's just women just won't give it up. This kind of reversal of accountability, where accountability is no longer on the individual but on society, that's a liberal philosophy. Liberals come up and say, it's not my fault that I don't make any money living on welfare. It's because I just can't get a chance. It's not my fault that I don't do what I should in my relationships and my family. I've got all these other forces beyond my control. Ron Paul saying the very same thing with the drug situation. Think about it for a moment. Let's say that you do not want another four years of Barack Obama. Let's say that you really want to fight socialism and big government intrusion, that you don't want to be tax to oblivion, that you want to fight the war on terror, that you actually want to go out and be proactive and go after the bad guys before they bring it to us, then we have to win an election. This is just plain and simple. We can't go out and say, well, you know, I'd like to have this Ron Paul utopian reality, so I'm going to vote for this guy out of principle. I'm just going to vote for him out of principle. Barack Obama loves you, Ron Paulies. He'd love to have a whole lot more of you. Matter of fact, if Ron Paul runs for president in 2012, his bump 
bumper sticker should say Ron Paul 2012 because we want another four years of Barack Obama because that's exactly what you're doing. Matter of fact, you ought to go in the ballot box and hit Barack Obama. I've told this to a lot of my friends that support Ron Paul and I don't hate him, but I understand their candidate's a loser. He's a loser in that he can't win. He's a loser in that he's got bad ideas. He simply got bad ideas when they say, no, I'm going to vote for Ron Paul out of principle. And all I can say is save yourself the time and vote for Barack Obama because that's where your vote's going. 